Hello everyone, this is Richard. Welcome to the YouTube channel. Thank you for watching the video today. Um, first off, I want to say a huge thank you and welcome to my new YouTube channel subscribers. For those of you out there that have subscribed to my YouTube channel, thank you so much. If I haven't subbed you already, I will get round to doing that. Um, I've been a little bit occupied lately. On the 7th of July 2013, um, my wife and I had our first baby daughter. Her name is Grace Catherine and she is absolutely gorgeous. So I've been a little bit busy being a dad. So I found time, and that, you might say, how can you find time to do railway modeling when you've got a little baby screaming their lungs off at you every day and night? Um, the answer is you, you, you find time here and there when it's convenient. So um, this is my sort of relaxation tool um, to get away from that sometimes. Uh, no, not really, uh, it's, it's all enjoyable. Anyway, back to the video. So this is some work I've done on the layout recently. Um, before um, we had the baby, I did quite a bit of work on the um, steam loco yard, but I just didn't get time to actually upload the video. So this is the, the fruit of that today. So the steam loco yard was the last part of the layout that the track wise was unweathered. It was this plain track and I hadn't weathered it and it just began to annoy me uh, the more and more I looked at it. <laughs> so I thought I've got to do something about it. So I went out and I actually ordered some of the wonderful rail match spray paint range and I got some rail match uh, matte black spray and what I've done is just finally sprayed all the track in the steam loco depot and over the back sidings which oops where is it? All right way over there. So finally all my sidings over there in the depot are all sprayed up and the only shiny bits that you can see is the surface of the running rail itself so that is more prototypical. If I bring the camera back into shot there I'll show you this. What I've done, you might be able to see this in the camera shot here on these set of points here, you can see perhaps the sides of the rail on this set of points for example you can see just above the sleepers there the flange part of the rail um, has been weathered with the matte black rail match spray and this does improve vastly I think the, the track work certainly in the steam loco depot we've also added some cinders and ash mixed together and placed in the forefoot as you can see in around the nose of the points there and then also in between each siding You've also got a mixture of the geocenics ash and also the woodland scenic fine cinders and ballast ash mix. So that's what I've done with that. Again, the whole thing put down onto PVA glue. And then in some places like here, I've also sprayed on top of that. Give it a final little spray with some matte black paint again. Oops. As you can see there. So you've got a nice contrast between each colour, which is what I think is great. Because in a real railway, if you go out and look at a preserved railway line or a real ra operational railway, um, the track, the rails, the sleeper, the ballast, the cess, the six foot, ten foot, all the track environment is never normally uniformly the same colour. There's always different shades of weathering, rust, weathered ballast, weathered rails, weathered sleeper conditions, everything, you name it, on a, on a real railway, because the railway is actually, it's outside, it's, it, it's constantly exposed to the elements, you get this overall weathered effect in real life. And with model railways, um, there are many ways to do that. You can do it with an airbrush, or you can do what I've got. I've gone for the cheap way and just used different uh, scenic products and also some spray paint. So anyway, that's what I've done in terms of weathering for the track there. I'll bring that out there. And as you can see, I've got a little bit more of this Geocenics ash, which I love. I've placed them on the forefoot there. We bring the camera around. As you can see, there's got loads and loads of cinders of ash over there. And this is quite, I've actually got a book um, at home. I think, it's by, I think it's by Gavin Morrison. It's called Steam on Stratford Shed 38. And it's nothing but Stratford Shed and East London which is the Great Eastern section in the 1950s to the early 60s. There's a couple of good photographs in that book that show some steam sidings um, in Stratford Yard with the ash and cinders right the way up to the top of the rail level, both in the forefoot 
and in the cess areas and this is what I've tried to go for here which I think looks half decent the other thing I've done as well I've actually weathered and sprayed up my cobblestone a little bit of sheet in there as you can see and the inspection pits also have been weathered as you can see there so they now look the part at least I think just bring the camera around here so yeah overall pleased with that and the other little thing I've been up to as well if I just move the camera around um, our water troughs now in, in one of my last videos we talked about the water troughs that I put in on the layout obviously for the steam drains and what I've done as well the water troughs as you can see in real life again this is where railway modeling is very important in terms of research if you're going to model something reasonably or accurately as best you can always use research materials such as books photographs or nowadays you've got the internet so you can look at these old pictures and get an idea and make your own notes and drawings and often they come with really really good research material so I found out that water troughs obviously need a water supply so what I did I got a ratio water tank which they recommend for the water troughs which is this one here and we've now got a, a pump house for our, our water troughs and again I've just painted this one to my own taste and colour but you don't have to you can paint it whatever colour you like um, this is modeled I think on the Great Western uh, water tank trough but I've just used it obviously for my layout and for the purpose of somewhere where the water's got to be drawn in for the water trough supply basically um, the corrugated roof oops on here this is really really good now I this this comes in I think it's black it's a black colored roof when you get it in the kit but what I did I painted my uh, corrugated iron roof I painted it with some of this grey paint that I've used for the tank and then once it was dry I gave it a nice little few light coats of uh, sleeper grime again by Rail Match Paints, spray paints so I gave it a quick few blasts of Rail Match sleeper grime paint and then whilst it was drying I just got a very very fine cotton bud and just very quickly and randomly went over the paint whilst it was drying and you get this nice rusty corrugated iron sort of roof look and I'm quite pleased with that and I'm sure many of you out there can do the same thing if not better so that is my little uh, water pump station or water tank for the troughs and the other little bit I did as well the other day I found some more of the backing board so I've now continued the backing board from the corner right the way along now to that side so at least here in this shot you've got a little bit more of a backing board there so we've continued the, the scenic break or the scenic board around the side of the layout as well now so that gives a little bit of relief I'm planning on getting some scenic paper from Pico or someone like that, Gage Master maybe and sticking it on there and giving it a little bit of dimension but in the meantime we've got a little bit of low relief there and I hope this has given you some ideas to uh, try out on your own layout for the first time or if you're an old hand you probably have got the same ideas, if not better. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. I'm now going to close the video with some trains. Thanks for watching. God bless. Take care. Bye-bye.